Hi, and welcome to another video in the RHCE video series. Today's video is on Manage Parallelism. So, parallelism um, essentially is that we want to manage how many uh, plays within a playbook are run in a, at a, in a particular time, so or tasks as part of that play. So, um, so when you have a playbook at a, in the current configuration, um, by default it's set to five. So it would run up to five hosts um, at a time um, before it runs on to the other ones. Um, so if you have it set to something extremely high, you could imagine the Ansible control node is going to get overwhelmed with all the requests it's sending and receiving. Um, so uh, by default it's set to five, which is very, pretty conservative. Um, and it's something you can probably... Um, uh, manually configure but it also depends on what kind of devices you're managing so if it's something like uh, you go and send in a, a yum command or a dnf update or something like that to the systems and they're going away and doing that and then just reporting back on success and, and failure see that's not very um, load heavy on something like uh, the control node however if you're doing something like uh, communicating with network devices and you have to extrapolate the data that comes from it or, or something like that you can imagine that's a, a lot more heavy on the control node and you'd have to probably manage that in a slightly different way so it obviously depends on uh, the actual memory and the cpu of the device as well the, the, how much compute uh, that device has as well so um, if it can actually handle those additional forks or um, uh, parallel uh, executions so it's actually set in configuration. So let me just launch the terminal windows always. Um, I will have to be a sudo. So it's a sudo myself. Okay. So if we go to um, find the Ansible config. So we can just do a grep of forks in etc. Ansible and ansible.config and we can find that it's currently set to 5 it's, it's actually commented out but obviously it's just giving you the default value in this case we can also check the default value with a ansible hyphen config and then dump that will give all the config and we can then just do a grep minus i and forks so we can see the default forks and again it's saying default again uh, equals five so obviously we can go into the ansible config etc ansible ansible.config i'll do a vim because i just like it better and we can just go through through all these little defaults here and we can have a look for forks so let's just do a search for forks with slash and just do an insert and we just change it to uh, let's just do 10 it doesn't really matter too much and remove the comment out then it's actually set and you can see it's highlighted that it's actually set in it um if we double check that it's now set to uh 10 in the ansible config dump so you can see it's live updating that so if we run any ansible script we have um let me just double check <clears throat> It won't really make much of a difference because I don't have that many systems uh, registered, but you can imagine um, it would allow us to execute um, a whole lot more. Okay, so I've just gone into one of the old um, directories where I've got some YAML files. So we can do a bit of a testing. So I think a good test would be just to do a time and we can just basically time the different speeds. So I've just got a free uh, hosts in an inventory file and i've just set it up so that um we can we can do a test with 10 forks set and then we'll do a test with one fork so at least we can see the difference there in the potential speed of the execution so we'll just do a um a time and then we do ansible hyphen playbook uh, minus i because i have to specify this inventory special, special inventory file um and what one was i going to run um Oh yeah, it was uh, I think it's let's have a look. Uh, yeah, status HTTPD, right? So we'll just get the status of HTTP and make sure it's okay. 
as one of the ones we created in an earlier video. So you can see it's pretty quick. So it runs in um, what's run around five, five seconds at the moment. So if we go back into that config, uh, so it's etc. Ansible um, ansible.config, and we'll just make that change to let's move this to to a one. And I'll just do a clear, and we'll just do the same command again, and we'll just watch for the difference in speed. And you can see it run in 11 seconds. So yeah, that's it's a considerably slower because it can only do one host at a time. So you can see that, uh, especially when you go to uh, grander scales than this, uh, you're going to get that much more um, that much more potential speed when you have multiple clients running at, at once. Especially when you're doing stuff where it's, it's again like you're sending the commands manually to the to the system. One thing you can do, um, so we've got it set to uh, one right now. So we can do a minus F here, and we set it to, I don't know, we set it to 10 again. And we're back to five seconds again. So that, all that does is just overrides the current value and just sets it to uh, the 10 forks for this particular command. So uh, you can have a default and you can have an override um, as required. So if we go back in, I'm just gonna set this back to 10 for now. And we'll right quit and we'll do a clear. Okay, so one more thing we can talk about is what's called rolling updates, or we can basically have updates that don't apply to all the systems at once. So um, a good example I've seen elsewhere was something like web servers. So maybe you have a cluster of web servers, uh, say 10 servers, and you're going to apply some uh, an update to them, all of them. But you don't want to obviously apply it to the entire cluster at once. So say this is the state, this is the way it runs, so it runs the Apache update, um, it restarts the service post the update to make sure it um, brings, brings all, the, all the new configuration and whatever has been updated. Um, so it does all that, and you can imagine if you did that all at once on 10 servers, on all 10 servers, you're going to literally bring down the web service. So it, it has a function of, it's called the rolling updates. Um, essentially, it's a field called uh, serial. And we basically can set that value to say, I don't know, we can do two systems at a time or four systems at a time to then um, allow it to just do those few systems at a time, then move on to the next one and then move on to the next one and the next one. In that way, then again, we have that protection um, in the within the playbook to say we only want to apply it to two systems at a time. And a good thing with this is as well is if there's a failure, say um, it runs those two, first two systems, and it fails for whatever reason, it won't then continue on to the next set of systems. So then you can go and troubleshoot and have a look what the potential issues in the uh, in the, in the software or or a new playbook itself. So again, we go back to that HTTP status. Uh, it wasn't HTTP, I think it's status HTTP uh, YAML, and we're just going to add another line here, and that is. Just set it to, I'd say, say two, and right quit. So now we change the file. So let's go and execute it now. So I'll do a time as well. It's uh, we should see it take a little bit longer than the uh, ten, but sh shorter than the one um, fork. So what you can see here is we have two plays here. So we've got play all. We've got then the task of gathering facts, and you can see it's only applied against two. So we've got client one, then we've got the fatal because I only have one client. Um, and then we have the actual task, which is then applied against client one. Then we have another play all, which is because we've got just two, the serial set to two, we have these two, and client one is the only one actually active. And then it obviously has one more left, and it completes uh, that it does the task to get try and gather facts on that system. It gathers the facts it's not available, so then it completes. So basically we have the plays run twice here. So for the first two set of systems and then for the for the next two, which is obviously we've only got three registered, so we have that. So we've got a real time of around eight seconds. So you can see it's between literally between the two because we're running two at a time um, rather than the full fully fledged ten and what we had previously. So that's really all I wanted to talk to uh, to you about in this one. Um, 
uh, as always i hope it's been useful to you um thanks as always for for watching my videos if you like this video um please like and subscribe um and also hit the bell icon um because i i do release uh try to release uh, weekly if i can um but sometimes a bit more sporadic uh, due to time constraints at times but yeah, um, I'm aiming to do the entirety of the RHCE serial, uh, series, so basically all the objectives for the exam. Um, I'm hoping to cover that over the series of videos. Um, right now, I've just popped up on my sc on the screen uh, my T Public page. Uh, that's for any kind of CSG merch. If that's anything you're interested in, uh, got my Kofi page um, for any kind donations. Um, if that's as something you're interested in um, yep and also just the details of my discord server so that's the best place to ask questions um, also we've got obviously you can ask questions in the comments and I'll try and um, help out where I can but discord place is a great place we've got a bit of a community going there and um, you can reach out to myself and also the community and someone will try and help you um, yeah, it's a great community we're building there well, thanks again, and I'll see you at the next video. Cheers.